Jerry Dulac reported today that the Steelers contemplated a quarterback change. If they were contemplating that already with this guy, why wouldn't they contemplate a bigger one in the offseason? Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of State of the Steelers. Welcome back to another film breakdown where today we're going to be breaking down Kenny Pickett's performance uh, this past weekend and a losing effort to the Arizona Cardinals up until the point where he got injured. How did he do? How didn't he do? It appears, though, that some folks are starting to see what I've been saying about Kenny Pickett since last year. Well, let's break it down. Let's get into it. So this is the first play that we're going to be looking at in this play here. I think this is actually a pretty good play for Kenny Pickett. So right here, what you're going to have is Kenny Pickett, play action pass, and the routing green is going to be George Pickens. This is another play, in my opinion, that goes back to tendencies. You know, oftentimes when the Pittsburgh Steelers are in under center, it's either going to be a run. A few times that it's not a run, it's going to be a play action pass. And when it's been a play action pass, the route that Kenny Pickett has gone to in most occasions is a Najee Harris route underneath in red or the tight end route in yellow. It's very rare, if not at all, that he has gone over the top deep down towards the route in green. So given those tendencies, going to George Pickens is against them. The defense is sending in a blitz, sending five defenders, and the rest of the defense is running in zone. So right here, this is a read for Kenny Pickett. Uh, the defensive back circled. If he goes up the field with George Pickens, the read is to hit Connor Hayward, the tight end, underneath, running towards the sideline. If that defender covers Hayward or goes down towards Hayward, throw it over the top. Now, given the position of that defensive back, his back is facing towards the sideline. He's not in the greatest position to cover George Pickens. Kenny Pickett makes the right decision and the right throw. Throw it over the top to George. One thing that I saw that the Arizona Cardinals were doing uh, multiple plays was the cornerback on top of the uh, screen in the right corner from the offensive side of the view was playing in man quite a bit. The rest of the defense was running in zone. On this play here, you're going to have a mirrored look from the outside receivers. They're both going to go out and then come back in. Allen Robinson is going to have a double move towards the end zone from the slot position. Pat Firemuth is going to come out a little bit but then post back towards the end zone and you're going to have Najee Harris come out last you know, a little bit of a check down route just in case and he's going to be in the middle of the field one of the things that I've noticed is when Kenny Pickett has been accurate on the move and on the run has been when he's turning to his left when he's going to his right however it just doesn't seem like his accuracy is there. And on this play here, you have George Pickens. He sees Kenny Pickett. They're both running towards the sideline. The ball should be thrown up and towards the sideline. Instead, look at where this ball is placed. Low and in, which gives this defensive back an opportunity to make a play. Now, this is the very next play here. And again, this is another situation where Kenny Pickett just eyes one receiver. Now, at the top of the screen, you have Pat Fryermuth, who's going to be running up and towards the pylon area in the end zone. He is the only route on the top of your screen. On the bottom of your screen, you have multiple routes. And you have Allen Robinson, who ends up coming open in the middle of the field. Again, the defense is playing in a zone except for, except for the outside cornerback, who is one-on-one -on -one coverage with Pat Fryermuth. This is why Kenny Pickett concerns me, and it's on this play here. Kenny Pickett never looks off of Pat Fryermuth. He's the only receiver on this side of the field. Pat Fryermuth cuts to the sideline. He's covered by the underneath defensive player. If he cuts towards the middle of the field, that defensive player is still in position to make a play. And if he cuts towards the post, the safety over the top is there. And if he ends up doing what he does, which is going towards the pylon, the defensive back covering him has position there. So no matter where Pat Fryermuth goes, he's covered. He's blanketed. Also, look at Kenny Pickett's stance. I've pointed this out before. He opens up really, really wide. Could that be something that affects his power, his accuracy? I don't know. I'm not a quarterback nor a quarterback coach. But I, I can see it, and it looks weird. Let me know in the comment section. What do you guys think about Kenny Pickett's stance right here? And while you're at it, hit that like button. Let's get this going. Let's get this into the algorithm going, and let's get this out into the world. I appreciate it. And underneath, like I mentioned before, you're going to have Allen Robinson come wide open. Just never looks off. Just never looks off. Let's rewind that a little bit. Obviously, the ball snapped pretty low. Look at that. He has to pick it up off the floor. And Allen Robinson is wide open. 
you come in wide open at the bottom of your screen, but Kenny Pickett just never sees it. Ends up being an incompletion. On this play here, this is a play that uh, same concept ends up being run a little bit later in the, in the game when Kenny Pickett actually goes down. Could have been a touchdown there to Calvin Austin. We'll talk about it more when that play comes up. But on this play here, you're going to have Allen Robinson, who is the route in yellow, come across the field you know, in motion as the ball is snapped. He's probably the only guy that's open. But again, Kenny Pickett just stares down one receiver. Not, nobody else is really open on this play, but I just find the concern being the stare down of the one receiver. Let's just say that the Pittsburgh Steelers go out there and get this brand new Shanahan disciple offensive coordinator this offseason. If Kenny Pickett can't get off of read one, it doesn't matter who's going to come in. He's going to have some problems. Defenses are going to notice and they're going to be able to dissect what he is doing and prepare for his game. There are some huge red flags and concerns with Kenny Pickett. Man coverage over the top. Everybody running zone again. Now, this play here, this isn't a pass play. This is one of the plays where I ended up getting called back for bad formation. I don't know who this play is on. If it's on the coaching staff for not knowing that the tackle is supposed to be covered, I strongly doubt that. Now, I don't know if Kenny Pickett put too many people in motion. I, I don't know. I don't get what's going on here. You guys let me know in the comment section. Either way, Jalen Warren is going to come out in motion right here, and he's going to leave Dan Moore unprotected. It's a penalty. It's clear as day. Uh, it's coming back. It ended up was going to be a first down. Ended up not working out for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Just wanted to throw that one out there for you guys. Now, this play here I really like. And the reason I like it is because up to this point, I mean, if it's happened, I haven't seen it. But up to this point this year, Kenny Pickett has not had a traditional drop back pass under center where there's no play action pass, where there's no handoff. Just three steps back and throw. And this is the first play I see of it. Again, this is another play going against tendencies that the Pittsburgh Steelers don't do. That now they are putting on tape that they do. And... Defenses now have to play the Steelers more honest about it. It's going to be up to the Steelers to still have to come up with and better execute the, the opponent. It's easier when you're doing things the opponent has never seen or prepared for and opposite of what you traditionally do. But once the opposite defenses are expecting certain things, that's when execution has to be better. But on this play here, I think it was a great play by Pickett and, and the offense. It was it was accurate throw. Great decision by the coaching staff to do a traditional drop back pass in this moment for first down. You know, and, and right here I want to highlight something. Last week, you know, I saw in my comment section that I guess Kurt Warner had done a film breakdown talking about how he liked Kenny Pickett's progression and how he looked from one place to another place quickly. I don't think he's doing that. I think he's just trying to look off the defense. And there's a few plays where he looks one direction quickly and then goes somewhere else. And on some of those plays, the receiver is open. So that tells me he's not really looking at that receiver. It's just to move the defense, which then boils back down. He's only looking at one read. Now this is going to be a screen play. You know, against the Browns, he did a back shoulder pass on a screen which causes Steelers the, you know, not to get the first down. And it kind of does the same thing here again. Look at the position. Look at the placement of the ball. And there's no reason for him to be throwing it that far behind. Against the Browns, when I brought this up to everyone's attention, I had a couple of comments saying that, well, he threw it that way because he had pressure coming in from the right side. It had to be further back. Well, in this play, clearly, there is no pressure coming in from the right side. Kenny Pickett's in throwing motion. He's about to let go of the ball here pretty soon. No one's coming in between him and Jalen Warren. There is no need to throw this to his back shoulder. Now, this is the play I was telling you guys, where Kenny Pickett looks one way and then turns around and, and throws the ball somewhere else where I think he had made that determination pre-snap. And the reason being is he's going to look at George Pickens at the top of your screen. George is open. Yeah, he just turns around real quick and throws it to the other direction. He never comes off. Let's rewind that. So he's looking at George right here, and I'm slowing this down. George comes open, yet he's already turned around to look at the other direction. All this tells me is that Kenny Pickett predetermined before the snap that he was going to go to Pat Fryermuth, 
that this looking off or potentially reading the defenses like Kurt Warner was saying isn't accurate. And I'm not saying that Kurt Warner doesn't know what he's doing. He's a Super Bowl Hall of Fame winning quarterback. He knows a lot more than I do. But like I mentioned in my comment section, he's a very busy guy. You know, he covers the, the NFL and not just the Pittsburgh Steelers, but all sports and all quarterbacks across the league and does film review on all of them. So I don't blame him for not knowing some of the tendencies that Kenny Pickett has. And this is going to be the last play of the game for Kenny Pickett. This is the injury play. Again, like I mentioned earlier, this is a play where you have Calvin Austin coming across in motion before the ball is snapped. He's going to end up coming wide open. Kenny Pickett just glances and then I don't know what he does. He panics, runs around, gets hurt. And what would have made this play successful and why I think that Calvin Austin was the first option on this play is because of the route of George Pickens. What he does is he's going up, he's going to hit his guy and then run towards the safety that is covering or potentially covering Calvin Austin. So effectively rubbing slash picking two different players, which makes Calvin Austin wide open. He never really looks all that way. I mean, he looks one direction a little bit, but he never really looks to Calvin Austin. Panics, runs, ends up getting hit. Let's watch that again. So look at George Pickens at the top of your screen. He is basically shielding his defensive back from getting towards where Austin is, and then he runs towards number 34, the safety. This is open, guys. This is wide open for Calvin Austin. Just doesn't happen. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. A little bit later on, maybe tomorrow night, I'll be dropping down another video breakdown of Mitch Trubisky and what we can expect in the next couple of games without Kenny Pickett. I personally think that Mason Rudolph should get the nod, but I think we all know what we got in Mitch Trubisky. I don't think anybody wants to see that out there. Let me know in the comment section who you rather see starting in place for the injured Kenny Pickett, Mason Rudolph, Mitch Trubisky. Like, comment, subscribe, share, tell a friend. Let's get this out to the YouTube algorithm and let's spread the word. I appreciate everything you guys do for us. We're State of the Steelers. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.